any other social platforms. We are here, live, yes. in living color. Amen. Yeah. Amen. So, yes. thank God for the pre-show. Absolutely. Right? Those Absolutely. young ladies doing that. a great job. They are. They are. They are. And the thing I love about what's going on with our youth and our young ladies that's doing our pre-show is that they're evolving. Yeah. And they're getting more intelligent. You heard yeah. what I said? More intelligent. Carrying the weight of uh, social media through television, being comfortable. That's my whole thing. They're, you can tell they're getting comfortable with that. And I really, really love that because we can get comfortable with many things. But, you know, the kingdom of God is left somewhere in the back. But I just love them putting that fervor and that... that, that um, just beautiful, awesome spirit for the kingdom of God. So, so kudos to you, ladies. And let's let's throw something in the chat for our youth because they are really lit and on fire tonight. So we're excited about what God is doing through them. Amen. Should we get? Amen. Should we pick two young men to try to do it? I think so. I keep saying. I keep saying. They, men, they we need hiding. you. <laughs> them. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. Well, well, we'll pray and see what happens. Yeah, we'll throw and maybe that out we there. can get them and and the two young ladies to do it together. That'd, That'd be, be amazing. That'd be amazing. That'd be awesome. And then we'll laugh at who's trying to talk. Yeah, yeah, that will be funny. Yeah. So we one thing I love when I uh, when we put our youth forth, we get an opportunity, definitely as adults and even the parents of our youth, to see what's in them. And sometimes it doesn't, we don't know because it doesn't get displayed. You know, many times we see them, they're sitting, and we don't know what they're taking in. But when you put someone under the spotlight and you give them a chance to vent, you find out what they've been learning. Uh -huh. So that's what I really, really love about letting our, so other youth, we want you to get prepared as well. Because we want to hear it. We, we're for you all, and we want to know what we're doing and what we're Maybe one doing. night we should do a Q&A challenge. That would be amazing. The, the, the old he is against the young he is. I would love that. I would love that. <laughs> them youth bet not Harmony, win. Harmony they bet. say that sounds amazing. Them youth win. That means she already saying we're going to win, isn't she? Yeah. She telling me what the prize is. That means she knows she's going to win. Oh, my goodness. She said a $500 prize. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. We'll, we'll be praying because you said that look real confident. You're going to win that 500 But But um, we're, we're going to do this. we got yes. a lot to try to say. So good to have all of you here physically. So Absolutely. good to see you. All of you. Yeah, for sure. Um, we may have some, some, some stragglers coming through later, and we're going to receive them as well, I guess. Oh, absolutely. We absolutely. should start charging late people. Oh, my God. Help us. We can't do it. Late fees. Mm -hmm. <laughs> it sounds good, but that's not spiritual. Mm -mm. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're going to get a sweet tea read to us tonight yes. on Tuesday, and I hope your soul drink. And then yes. we're going to go right into the Word, because we don't have long on Tuesdays, right? Absolutely. And I think it's a meeting after this for uh, the youth department, I think. Is that right, daughter? For, for, for Easter Sunday. Sounds for some awesome. reason, I thought this Sunday coming was Easter, but it's, it's the following. It's the next one, not this one. The 31st, the March the 31st is Easter. The fifth, it's a fifth Sunday? Oh, wow. That's the Sunday the Deke's been missing. <laughs> We ain't have they a hot they, dog in a minute. They said they own it. <laughs> we need something. <laughs> they ain't we have a hot dog in a minute. Fish sandwich. That's probably why the visitors stopped coming. <laughs> <laughs> See? These, these low responders. Please tell these deeps to come up to the high place. Pray for Fish our deacons. <laughs> Um, yeah, so come on, sweetie. Okay, so um, hi to our eCampus as well. And for those of you all that don't know what we're doing, it's called Sweet Tea for, for the, the soul. soul. Yeah. So we want to make that clear. For the soul. Um, and um, it is so needed in this time. It's really needed. So let me get started. Our Sweet Tea for the Soul tonight is a little short. It's shorter than the other ones. Yeah. But it reads, place your confidence. Mm. You ready? In Christ yeah, alone. Yeah. Live in faith. Live in faith. Not fear. Ooh. Very small, faith. but very powerful. 
Live in faith, not fear. Live in faith, not fear. But the first part is the part I think most all of us, if I can be safe, is missing. Place your confidence mm. in Christ alone. Alone. It's the alone part. And so I think it would be safe mm. to say that most would struggle in that because when we do a um, self-analysis on where our trust or where our confidence lies, will it be in God or will it be in our spouse? Will it be in our finances? Will it be in our business? I mean, what would it be in? Would it be in our pastors? Mm. But place your confidence in Christ alone. alone. So I think that really gets to me because it didn't say place your confidence in, in everybody you know plus Christ. Good. Because we kind of spread and, our and, you know confidence out. You know, yeah, yeah. Good. We put it in Very everybody. Yeah. And then Christ is in he's in the mix, but but it says place your confidence in Christ alone. So alone, that's just something yeah. that sticks out to me that Lord let us make sure that we know the only stable thing that we can depend on. Would be that confidence. And it says in live in faith. And then live in faith, which not is spiritual. Fear. Not in fear. Because we can put and build a residency mm -hmm. in fear. Oh, absolutely. That's good, sir. That's Are we going to talk about faith tonight, actually? Wonderful. So good. Sweet yes. tea for the soul. Was that good, y'all? The sweet okay. tea for the soul? Something to think about. Was your tea hot or cold? Y'all, any more cold? Any more cold tea tonight? You like yours cold? I like both. Okay, we had some cold tea and hot tea. <laughs> but whether it's hot, cold, I'm, nobody didn't say lukewarm, did he? Mm -hmm. You didn't want God to spew it out. <laughs> hot tea. I'm drinking hot tea tonight, so I guess my tea was hot tonight. You drinking hot coffee? Yes, sir. Relig <laughs> religiously. Unapologetic. You like cold coffee too, though. Mm, uh, not, I'll drink it, but it's not. You okay. Know, I don't really order it or make it or anything like that. But I'll, but I'll try it. I mean, I'll taste it. Here this is true. I really don't ever mm -hmm. see you yeah. drink but cold I'll, coffee. I'll try it. Yeah. I'm finna try to rebuttal some kind of way. <laughs> All yeah. right. Let's um, let's get busy. Y'all ready? Yeah. I'm excited. You know where I'm going. I need one or two takeaways from, I don't know, this whole series. Because I told you Sunday that it was coming to a close. Mm -hmm. It's not tonight, but it's sincerely coming to I'm a close. Like and I got something else I'm going to try to teach you guys that I think is going to be a blessing to you if you hear and apply. Yeah. Amen. Okay? Yes, sir. If you hear and apply. 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 It's going to be a blessing. Um, I didn't see hands go up. Any hands? Yes, Miss Hamron. We got a microphone, Josh. Okay, here we go. They flying in, coming in hot. Great evening. God bless you. Great evening. Um, uh, one of the things that you spoke about on Sunday, on the how-tos, okay. was the prioritizing what's important to God. Yeah. And you were speaking about uh, seeking a spiritual eye doctor. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> and and you talked about how Samuel, Samuel he heard, but he couldn't see. Mm. And I, I put myself in that, in that scripture oftentimes mm. where I hear, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but I need someone else to help me see it. Good stuff. And uh, to, to shape it into what God wants and is calling for. So, that right there was a great takeaway for me. Yeah, that's good stuff yeah. because I said on that too that Samuel or uh, Eli, I believe, was training mm -hmm. Samuel's eye. Mm -hmm. Is that correct? Yes. To, to get him, like you said, he heard it, but he couldn't see it. Mm -hmm. He heard a voice, but he couldn't understand or discern what was what was going on because his his eyes, mm -hmm. his understanding was darkened. Absolutely. And there are some things that a spiritual coach can do to help train your eye, yes. to help you see. Yes. Um, you could you could you could go through some things in your own family, mm -hmm. and they can hear you for a year or five years. Mm -hmm. 
and still can't see God. Do that make sense? I mean, I wonder how long you've been hearing us. And in some categories of your life, you still can't see. Yes, sir, because he allowed Eli to shape his eye. Absolutely. You understand he did exactly what Eli told him to do. He did exactly what he said. And then we know Ruth in the Bible, she allowed Naomi to shape her eye. I she like didn't it. have the second phase of her life. It was through the instructions of someone else that could see. But she had to allow, which means submission, total submission agreement, to another person, whoever that person is, mm. um, to, by faith, because you can't see it, you just trust it. Wow. By faith, trust the instructions and who it's coming from. But it still took her or his particip total participation to submit. So uh, that next level cannot happen if you're not in agreement to totally submit to what That is so absolutely mm -hmm. so on point. And I love the Ruth Naomi illustration because it was like, it was her destiny, like getting ready to be unfolded. And she, going in her own self, could have just like messed it up. Absolutely. And when she went to Ruth, I mean, when she went to Naomi, Naomi said, this is what I need you to do. I'm going to help you see. I'm going to see you through this. And, and, and Ruth said, everything mm -hmm. you tell me to do, what she it. say? All, I'm all, gonna, all, all that you tell me to do, I'm going to do, do it. it. That's what she said. I'm not deviating from, that's when you brought out a couple of years ago, don't deviate from the script or something like yes, that. Sir, that like I'd be teasing you about these recipes. <laughs> stop, still on me. I still gotta try something new else. Stuff in the stuff. <laughs> Just stick to the recipe. Mm -hmm. But we like just like cooking, we try here and we try that. Mm -hmm. And she said, All that you tell me to do, I'm gonna do it. Do, and yeah. that she did. Good stuff. And then um um Samuel did exactly what Eli told him. Absolutely. He helped train that eye. Ooh. And and that's something Lord to Jesus. really highlight and mm -mm -mm. really consider when you're receiving instructions from God through leadership or through whoever that coach may be. It could be with you working out, doing a business, financial coach. Do you really do all that they tell you to do? Or do you listen to all and then you pick and choose what you're going to submit to? Because that also will reflect your success level as well. Because in Ruth's life, not only was she successful, she was fully complete. She was fully complete because, remember, she fully, re she fully listened in all things where she was made whole. She was healed in every area, including the womb that she never had a child in when she was married prior to her husband for 10 years. She had a decade and she didn't conceive. But she was healed in every area. They came broke. She ended up owning the whole field. Sound like poverty to rich. You came empty. She didn't have a child. But when she fully listened, even her womb was open and healed. And she gave birth to Obed. So it, is, it makes one think, do we fully listen? Or do we just pick and choose what we want to listen to as well? Good stuff. That's just one takeaway, man. We got to move on. We got to go. Because go. I... Stick on this train eye for a long time. Okay, anybody over here? Yes, ma'am. Um, it's not from Sunday, but one of the things that um, you all talked about, and I'm summarizing it, okay. <laughs> is um, everybody may not see what I see, but that's because everybody didn't hear what I heard. So, and you were talking about um, Paul and his experience mm -hmm. and how even though people can be with you but they still won't see or hear mm -hmm. so it made me for my self-evaluation um what am i not seeing as it pertains to the vision of the house and so what am i not hearing what have mm -hmm. i misheard what have i you know and so i can see fully the whole thing right and a lot of times it goes it can go a couple of ways because there are some things is exclusive mm -hmm. 
for an individual to see. Like, I'm just saying, Paul's, Paul's experience could have been exclusive. And that's why the people with him didn't see it. But Paul's experience could not have been. It could have been for everybody. Just like Jesus told those disciples, well, he told Peter, well, he didn't tell anybody. He just said, come. Peter said, it bid me to come. Jesus just said, come. So all of them could have stepped out on the word. So some things can be exclusive. Some things don't have to be exclusive. But you can go back, like, asking yourself individually, why can't I see or why am I not? What's, what's blocking me from seeing what my pastor sees? Is Uncle Joe still in me so deeply that I can't see past Uncle Joe? You see it. Uh, you got to ask yourself, what's, what's blocking your view of seeing what your leaders see? Oh, man, if you search yourself out, you will find some things. You ask Holy Spirit, boy, he going to tell you, this is why you can't see it. This is why you probably can't see it. Married couples, and, and I got some video. I got a couple videos for the singles, man. Y'all gonna have, we're gonna have a great time with you. But married couples did not that Pastor Jimmy Evans, the way he explained the iniquity and the inner vows. O M G. Yeah, y'all got to see that too. Absolutely, and it's it's it's, it's something need to be seen. But when you see it, you need to make a change. Amen. I mean, you can't be like, okay, who was these fellas in the scripture in the book of Acts? Paul said, y'all just some superstitious folk. You want just every God that, that it is you want to know about, but never change. Wow. He said, when I was coming, I even viewed you got the God of something. On, huh? What did he say, Gerald? Yeah, the very superstitious. Tell Gerald I already said that part. <laughs> Maybe Gerald need to come on this side. Is his, his, his right ear? Is that left ear. Find that. Find it, Gerald. Google it. Because you got me interested now. Paul said, and when I was, as I was coming up here, something like that, he was, he was so upset with these people because y'all want to see something all the time, but ain't changing. Because this here, this iniquity thing, you act the way you act. He was saying this iniquity, I believe translated in Hebrew Greek means bent or to bend, to be bent. And iniquity has us from what our fathers and father fathers or mother and mother mothers did, it, it, it came into our generation and bent us. Now you act ill at people because of what your grandparent grandparents did. It just came through the generation. That's iniquity just come down through the generation and bent you too. But he said God want us to be unbent. To stand straight up and to straighten up. Yeah. As a matter of fact, I was thinking about that woman. I've been thinking about that since he said that woman would, that was bent in the scripture and couldn't no wise lift up herself. Yes. You got it, Gerald? Okay. I gave you enough time, I think. Let's see what it say. Gerald want to be a prophet tonight. Let him, <laughs> let him read. Read. Let's see. If he want his job back. <laughs> Come on, Herbert Washington. <laughs> That's an inside joke there. He used to read for Bishop Barber, one of the best readers I've ever heard. Herbert Washington, Jesus. Oh, never seen him. Oh. Then Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. Paul stood in the midst of Mars Hill. And said. Yeah. Ye men of Athens. Ye, look at this here. Now you got the, when I say read the Bible, what I say? Read the Bible. Read it. Get in there. Stand in there with Paul. Just get right beside him right now. He said, ye men of Athens. Can you feel it? Like, he was like furious with these people. He said, ye men of Athens. I perceive that in all things 
Ye are too superstitious. He say, in all things, you are too superstitious. You want to know everything. And when you get to know it, you don't follow it. You don't change. He said, in all things, you just too superstitious. You got FOMO. <laughs> Today, we just say, you just nosy. <laughs> and all things, go ahead. Ye are too superstitious. Too superstitious. Verse 23. For as I passed by and beheld your devotion. He said, I passed by since I've been here and checked out your devotion, how you do things here. Go ahead. I found an altar with this inscription mm -hmm. to the unknown God. To the who? Unknown. Okay. You, I don't know what you said the first time. <laughs> <laughs> to the own, 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 own. He trying to get his job back so hard. Girl, making up words, ain't it? Okay. Let's stop for that Tuesday laughter jump on it. To the unknown God. He said, I saw written on an altar to the unknown God. Look at this. They're saying if we've, if we've missed one. I mean... Because they were hitting this God, that God, worshiping this God, want to know about that one. And just in case we've missed one, to the unknown one. Home. Home. He fired. I didn't say, I didn't say home to twice. the unknown God. Whom, whom therefore, yeah. ye ignorantly worship. Yeah. Go ahead. Hit read. Him declare I unto you, verse 24, God that made the world and all things therein. Okay, that's all I need to know. So let's not be like these men of Athens. When we see, let's change. Because them videos that we showed the married couple the other night, if there's no change, it's just because you don't want to. I promise you that. And we're going to show it to you guys as well. Okay, so let's go to, uh, I don't know, I need a little more time to pray with Gerald. <laughs> um, one more takeaway. Let's do two more, and then we're going to go to a couple of scriptures I got. Uh, okay, let me hear. Come on, go go to Harmony one. And she, I think she gave a takeaway in the... And uh, is this going to be the takeaway you gave in the countdown? This is a different This one. is a different Okay. So, <laughs> my takeaway is um, when you had said, um, I don't exactly remember when, but I know it was in this um, topic about what you see is what you become. So, yes. Okay, was. what you see is what you become, like, consistently. Yeah. yeah. About, I know you had mentioned about that man who was consistently saying, this, this tree going to kill somebody. She's going to kill somebody. Oh, okay. Yeah, but that yeah, wasn't yeah. really with this, but I know you had said it in this. Yeah, um, that's what Apostle Freeman was saying. Be careful what you say. In, if, no, that's it. If you say it in abundance, it may be possible you would slip into agreement. Yeah, that's good. That's good. Very good. Thank you, Harmony. Go ahead. Give it the boss. Let, let me see what. Yes, sir. Um, I believe this was pertaining to Hagar. But the statement was made. It says, "What do you, what you see is going to ca cause you? It's going to basically what you see will preserve you." And I think that's when um, we were talking about what how what you see will preserve you. Yeah, it's a. Pre I paraphrase it because I think when I was typing it, I might have mistyped something, so oh, I couldn't okay. read it. <laughs> so basically, um, when she when she was uh, in, I guess out in the wilderness, and she couldn't see, but. God opened her eyes for what would preserve her. She saw the whale. So that's, uh, that was the takeaway I got from that one. Yeah, why you guys think she didn't see the whale if, if, if it was always there? Circumstance. Uh, she huh? You say she was concerned? She had a lot of, I think she had a lot of worry. They was about to die. 
See what happened on Tuesday nights. Y'all need to get here. Fast. Deacon Shroud took his mask down and she was looking the wrong way. That's why she ain't see it. <laughs> Maybe if she just would have turned her head, she would have saw it. I can't, I can't, I can't. I don't see how y'all take this stuff, boy. Miss Tish, you it. That's gonna be it. Go ahead, Miss Tish. Her book is withdrawing. Oh, 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 you okay? So you're not giving a takeaway. You gonna give up? Oh, I'm sorry. No, you can. You good? Go ahead. That's fine. That's the takeaway for the night. <coughs> Deacon Deacon Strada said she was looking the wrong way. Let's. In response to what he was saying. <laughs> In response, okay. I I was thinking that her focus was on her and her son dying, mm -hmm. so she. Therefore, she didn't see the well. All she saw was the fact that they were out of water yeah. and out of bread, yeah. and she was just prepared to just die. Yep, good stuff. She was just, like, caught up in her situation, right? Yes. That every, huh? I was thinking different. You was thinking like Deacon Strong? Yeah, I was thinking it was, yeah, I was thinking it was hidden from her, but it was revealed by God through the angel. Because there are some things that can be around us. It's there, but it's hidden from mm -hmm. you because mm -hmm. you don't have the spiritual eyes um, that can see what's already there. So the revelation, I was coming from that end thinking that God used the angel to reveal to her something that was right in reach. She didn't see it, but it was exposed by the angel. Then she was able to drink. So that was how my thought pattern was. Yeah, it could have been something on that part that was mm -hmm. hidden that was God ordained that now that is revealed, you give me glory yes, for yes. revealing it. Absolutely. Uh, it was on the other side behind the tree, like Deacon Strada said, it was just, she just turned her head. God don't <laughs> get any glory out of that. Okay, so good stuff, you guys. I love, man, I love y'all, boy. You just don't know how much y'all heal me. I can't wait for Tuesday nights. He was trying to say she, she just was looking the wrong way. <laughs> okay, let's go to 2 Kings chapter 6. We're still on these how to increase your spiritual sight. How to increase. How many of y'all like how to's? Yeah. Just teach me how to, you know, just. Lord Jesus. Um, so, spot on. With all you guys' takeaways, um, I want to read something as related to kind of coinciding with what Ms. Heron said. Her takeaway was that you have to find like a spiritual eye doctor. So this kind of going to go into this. It's going to be on into that and submission as well. One of the things was submission, right? Yes, sir. Remember that was number one. You got... As a matter of fact, thank you, Lord. Number one was 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 segueing from Mark. Was it Mark eight thirty three, where I asked you, how did Jesus see Satan? Peter said Jesus saw right. Jesus saw Satan. Did he see him physically? Do you think? I don't think so either. Did he have a pick for it? Did he have a long tail? No, sir. Did he look like your husband? <laughs> oh, you see how that? That's, they got quiet. Ooh, Jesus. Did it look, did it look like your wife? No, sir. Did it look like your children? <laughs> okay. Did it look like your job? Okay, will your job say you look like Satan? Come on now. Come on. Come on. Come on. That part, huh? But Jesus had the capacity to see Satan. 
I said, how do you think he saw Satan? Ms. Livingston was spot on. She said, because of his relationship with who? His father. His father, right? He had a relationship with his father. He submitted to God. Um, somebody might have said, well, Jesus is God in the flesh. And you're certainly right. We're talking about God the Father. Jesus was God the Son, walking in the flesh on the earth. So God the Father was not on the earth. Okay, again, I make that clear. But he had, he submitted, or his relationship to his father caused him to see what others can't see. Mm. I gave an illustration naturally the other day where Miss Livingston had Pastor Rachel's car Pastor, on an assignment. Pastor Rachel had my truck on an assignment, and I'm home, and something came up where I needed a vehicle. And I said, oh, my God, I got to get somewhere in a hurry. And I said, oh, Jesus, what am I going to do? Then I, remember, I said, oh, Ronald. I say, son, can I use your car super, super, super quick? I got to go somewhere real quick. He say, sure. Got the key, jumped in it, and about two minutes down the road, I, as his father, immediately knew something was off. Now, he's been driving his car for the past, I don't know how many months. In his mind thinking, because I asked him, I said, uh, when I got back, have you been feeling anything funny about your car? He said, yeah, I've been noticing it, ain't, it don't drive as smooth as it used to drive. I said, son, the wires in your front passenger tire having a party, they just all hanging everywhere. Elbow. Just wires. And I brought him outside, I say, and I turned the wheel for you can see it. I say, touch that wire right there. And then he touched it, just poked, and I say, it's them real wires hanging out your hanging out your tire. Now, I'm saying that to say this because when I was going to shop the other day, this illustration hit me so hard concerning the relationship with your father will cause you to see things that could have and would have and wanted to ensnare you. I said, you need to go tomorrow and get you a new tire or a set if you want. And you need to get an alignment because this car is out of alignment with the designer's vision. Because, and I showed him with my truck. I was driving down the street and I just let the wheel go. I say, see how my wheel stays straight and the truck going straight? I say, now do your car like I did the other day. Time I let it go, it just start drifting. And that's what's eating up your tire. But because of his relationship with his father, that opened his eyes to see something he was just in. He knew something he said was kind of off with his car, but he didn't know what. Okay, this relationship thing is a big deal. That's good, sir. You going to help me tonight? Yes. I, yeah. I don't want to cut in. I don't want to cut in. Okay, good I'm, stuff. I'm going to cut in. Um, I was, I was thinking when you were saying about him, him right. Well, my thoughts was he kept riding. He kept riding. And there are some things in our life that you, we keep you're, doing. you know you're off. You know this is off. The marriage is off. The kids are off. But you can keep riding. Your ride, things are being destroyed, but you keep riding. And so that is why it's so imperative to have a father's eyes, to be connected, and to have to a relationship. And to be in relationship That's with it. your father. Yeah, have the relationship. Because some people in here tonight or watching through eCampus might keep riding mm -hmm. due to the fact of our relationship. Mm -hmm. There may be none. Maybe, yeah, exactly. I'm just the pastor. Exactly. And to the level or degree of relationship. That's good. They will keep riding. Absolutely. But what Ronald allowed you to do, when I allowed you to do, what, what we have to allow the father to do is put his eye on it. Mm -hmm. So some things that you may ride through, why wouldn't you want the eye of the father to solidify whether this is good or not? 
And so um, one thing that we don't um, see many times is people allowing the father to give an opinion. Yeah. We just going off because if Ronald would have just kept going on his own, who knows? God forbid. He, he would have been on the side of the road. Front wheel that, blowout. That, yeah. Because when I was driving this car, I said immediately something off. And I knew what it was because of experience. Mm -hmm. I said, one of these tires is horribly bad. Mm -hmm. And I saw the wires hanging out. But the relationship was, and I told him what he needed to do, and the next day he did exactly what I told him to do. And I asked him when he got home, did you see a difference or feel a difference in your vehicle? He said, oh, my God. <laughs> it rides smooth like I just bought it. And it came because of relationship. Absolutely. You can have a rough ride in life yes, sir. Come on. due to the negligence of your relationship with a father. Wow. And this is what opened, this is one of the first things we said Sunday, how to open or increase your spiritual sight. And this scripture right here is going to go even deeper into it. But I told him, when you get this alignment and this tire, the next thing I need you to do is go get an oil change. Mm -hmm. When the last time you got one of them? Mm -hmm. but if and you it notice, was cricket. But if you notice, you didn't give them that instruction or instructions or that instruction, as I said, until he followed the others. Right. And so there are so many instructions waiting for you, but you need the, not the eye of the tiger. You need the eye of the father. And that is one reason why Satan makes sure he de he detaches you mentally, psychologically, emotionally Pastor from the Ray, father. That was pretty good. You don't need to eye of the tiger. You need to eye of the father. father. Yes, sir. That was pretty good. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. I started to just go past it, but I got convicted. Still didn't see a seed in three weeks. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't see the seed in three weeks, but thank you. Yeah, I was trying to just let you go ahead and talk. You yeah, finished? I think so. Yeah. Okay. So yeah. Um. Yeah, we need the eye of a father. But to have the eye, we got to be in relationship with the father. Absolutely. Jesus was in total submission to his father. Because what you reminded me. I thought me, you said you was done. Well, I was, but this part I wanted to say that, and, and at the risk of being naked, he was headed like sincerely towards having a terrible car wreck. Oh, right, okay. That could have possibly hurt himself, fatally killed somebody else. I mean, this is real. So, see, this is really, this really could have happened to our own son. But I want you to see yourself. What is it that you will not allow your relationship with your father to help you and get the eye of that you are possibly headed into total destruction? This is why Satan hates father and son relationships. He want our son to be detached from his father. He want our, you get what I'm saying? He hated. And some of you even today may oh, still Jesus. be dealing with bitterness and hatredness from your natural father. Or some type of way of a disconnection Amen. in your relationship with your spiritual father. I was talking to somebody yesterday, and I said to them, what if Jesus' relationship with his father really wasn't intact? And Peter was talking this emotional talk. Jesus, you can't go that, be this far from you. And Jesus went in on the emotion, said, oh, Pete, you know, man, you, you right, man. I chill and hang out with y'all a little longer. I ain't going this cross. I mean, this is not the will of the Father. Mm -hmm. This is the will of emotions. Mm -hmm. And now, now Jesus would have went and stayed longer because of Peter's emotions. Wow. Mm -hmm. And the will of the Father was cross and company. Mm -hmm. But wow. if Jesus wasn't in relationship, oh, Lord, I thank you. I see. If he wasn't in relationship with his Father, wow. you know what he pretty much said, Pete, I hear you. Man, but I see Satan. Because Satan through you want me to stay. But I know my father's will. It will benefit you and the world greater if I go. Emotions wanted him to stay. You know Satan will use your emotions. To play on somebody or manipulate somebody. Oh, I started to say something, but I don't know. It's Tuesday. Let's read. Second Kings 6, 11. Therefore, was somebody reading for me? Okay, y'all reading too slow. Therefore, the heart... <laughs> 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 Did Bennett say that? 
who oh Blair said I fired Gerald. Gerald did y'all I mean did y'all see was Gerald like trying too hard to the unknown God? Gerald trying to get a job back. Let me read. I'm gonna try. No, I won't too fast. No, you was reading way too fast the other night. You got fired quick. No, no, I don't think you did. You was about to. I think you caught back up. Therefore, the heart of the king of Syria was sore troubled for this thing. And he called his servants and said unto them, Will ye not show me which of us is for the king of Israel? Okay, go to 12. One of his servants said, None, my lord, O king, but Elisha, the prophet that is in Israel, watch this, tell of the king of Israel the words that thou speakest in thy bedchamber. Mm-hmm. And he said, Go and spy where he is, that I may send and fetch him. And it was told him, saying, Behold, he is in Dotham or Dotham. Now, watch this. Therefore sent, the, therefore, therefore sent he thither horses and chariots. Therefore sent this king. they trying to go spy out Elisha. He sent all these horses and chariots and a great host. You see that? Watch this. And they came by night and compassed the city about. Watch this. And when the servant of the man of God, who's the man of God? Elisha, right? Or Elijah. And when the servant of the man of God was risen early and gone forth or went out, behold, and host compassed the city. He saw all these horses and chariots. And his servant said unto him, unto Elisha, Alas, my master, how shall we do? What we going to do about this? Watch this. And he answered, Elisha said, what? Fear not. Fear not. Watch this. For they that be with us. Uh Read it. Are more than they that be with them. How did he know that? Hold up. He, how did, hold up. How do you confidently say, don't fear? See, when you got people rolling with you, they can't see what you see. They full of fear. This boy woke up and said, master, Ooh, they out there. Ah! <laughs> seen it. They coming. They they coming. They coming. That boy saw with his natural eyes a host of chariots and horses. And Elijah was like, man, he said, fear not. Calm yourself down because I see something. He said, for they that be with us. Mm are more than they that be with them. Now watch this, based on Miss Heron's takeaway. What was Miss Heron's takeaway? That you should find yourself a spiritual eye doctor, right? Okay, watch this. This mentor piece, like Eli, Eli, Eli Samuel, watch what happened with this. Go to verse 17, yeah. And Elisha prayed, watch this here, ooh, ooh, and said, Lord, I pray thee, open his eyes. Watch this, that he may see basically what I see. And the Lord did what? Open the eyes of the young man, and he what? So are those natural eyes? Okay, now watch what he saw. And behold, what? The mountain was God, oh, it's amazing, daughter, what we don't see. Yeah. It's amazing what have you anxious and another man calm. This boy ran out here and saw these horses and stuff with his natural eyes. He was just like, oh, my goodness. What? We about to, oh, we, it's just me and Alicia here. We about to die. Alicia say, man, if you don't sit down, you don't see this. Boy, if you don't see what I see. And it shows you, sir, that natural eyes will bring you to panic a lot. 
So if you're a person or someone that uh, panic a lot, you get real anxious over stuff, mm. that's three dimension. Because if you really look with your three dimensions, mm -mm -mm. you're going to panic. Uh -huh. You're going to be overtaken with fear. But if you're one that depends on your spiritual Lord eyes, Jesus. you're going to be very peaceful in times of adversity because you see something else. Pastor yeah. Rachel, watch this. So these are the how-tos. How to increase your spiritual sight. Check your connections. I mean through the connection of a seer. And through that seer's request or prayer to God, mm -hmm. mm. the servant mm. saw what Elisha saw. Mm. First of all, he had to be connected. Yes, sir. You see it? Yes, sir. He was connected. And the connection had already matured in his spiritual sight. Hiya. So, so this growing, this next piece I'm going to tell you about concerning how do you increase your spiritual sight is faith, okay? Now, I'm going to say that because these, these segues in, in together. You got to grow in this thing. As a matter of fact, that's what your father's, on your father's flyer that he sent us, I think the theme kind of leaning around growing in grace, Yeah, you got you to gotta grow in grace just like you grow in faith. It's awarded to both of us and all of us. Somebody get me the scriptures. Keep that one up there. But somebody go ahead and find, I think I got it written down, uh, to all of us has been given the measure of faith. Not a measure. Because that wouldn't be a just God to give us a measure. You got... A fourth of a cup. I got a half a cup. You got a full cup. That wouldn't be right. That means you can believe the things I can't. How is that right? You just giving measures. Okay, you got a question? Um, on the check your connections, that's people. Yeah, people. People. Primarily, I'm coming from people. It could be environments as well. It can be atmospheres. It, yeah, so, but primarily people. Check your connections because, watch this here, sight is contagious. You can still be seen like Pookie. Because you was connected to him. And you can't nail this faith thing for nothing because you won't release Pookie. Sight is contagious. Who you get around and hang around, you will start seeing like them. Elisha prayed and he just prayed. Look at the connection. Prayed and said, Lord, I pray, open his eyes that he may see. And the Lord opened the man's eyes and he saw, and behold, look what he saw, the mountain full of horses. Watch this here. They always been there. He just couldn't see it. So when Elijah, with his natural eyes, saw the king's horses and chariots, Elijah probably said, Pfft. Yeah, we go. Ooh, gee, they about to take a L. <laughs> Boy, you see this? They about to take a L. But in his mind, we about to take a L. He saw the mountain were full of horses and chariots of fire round about Elisha. And if Elisha say those that are we, there are more with us than with them. That means we had more horses than they had, wow. more men than they had, yeah. more chariots than they had, and we got some fire with ours. Oh my, oh my. He said, fear not. 
don't you go in this thing in your emotions and your natural vision because you're going to straight lose. How do you increase your spiritual sight? It's what we're talking about. Check your connections because seeing is contagious. You hang around me like for a while, you're going to either get with what I see or probably leave me. Because you're going to say, just like Pastor Freeman say, people think he's arrogant. And a lot of people don't want to be bothered by what he see. But the man can't help what he see. What well, if somebody just flat out told you, I don't want to be around you, man. You just poor in spirit. You just always see negative. You just, please get, just go. You always see us losing. You see you being sick. You see you being, you see, you see, you see. And now you come against a man that's seeing healing and health and wealth and prosperity. And now he arrogant. It's either this end of the pendulum or that one. And some, sometimes we don't know how to just hang in the middle somewhere. You, wanna, you don't want a prosperity preacher. You want, you want somebody to tell you you're going to be poor and broke the rest of your life and give God the glory in your brokenness. Go ahead, I'm sorry. Well, no, when you were saying that, uh, what came to mind was when you were saying the negativity is still a sight that can transfer. Absolutely. So if, oh, even, if absolutely. even if you're the person Jesus. that's negative and you always speak death, you see evil, you always, it, that sight can transfer to your kids, your spouse, and everything in your yeah, house absolutely. can become blind like you in the negativity as well. That's why Pastor Jim So it's Jim good Evans, or bad. Yeah, you know? good or bad. That's why Pastor Jim Evans was talking about this iniquity. Once we can stand and break this thing, and break these inner vows, we will project, watch this, righteousness to the next generation. Amen. Amen. You know you didn't receive it. Iniquity was, came into us. But if you don't break it, you're going to project righteousness on your grandchildren. Your grandchildren's children. So you can project righteousness or project iniquity. The fathers have eaten sour grapes and the children teeth are set on edge. Your children's children struggling because you refuse to stand up. Okay. Let's read. Uh, I told you find me. Who got it? You got him in here? Yes, sir. Let me try Tamela Livingston real quick, because I'm, I'm still trying to see who I'm going to fire. <laughs> Let me see if she can. Gerald said, I should have went second. <laughs> you know the person second always got a little advantage to try to outdo the first one. Yes, you got it, daughter? Yes, sir. Where the microphone? Okay, they done cut it off. I don't see the blue line around it. And three. Romans 12 and 3. Yes, sir. Okay, let me see what 12 and 2 say. Okay. Do we got to put some context to it? Or do you think it kind of explains itself? Okay, is that I've been having Romans 12 and 3, you say? Yes, sir. About the measure of faith? Yes, sir. Okay. You want to start with 3 or go back oh, to 2? Oh, I say through the grace. Okay, 3 is good. Okay. Yes, 3 sir. is good. I see it up there. For I say... Through the grace given. Oh. <laughs> you see her grace? She coming in hot. That's hilarious. Jero said that was all right. That's hilarious. That's good. We shaping her, right? Yes, sir. For I say. For I say, through the grace given unto me. Through, ooh, Jesus. Through what? The grace. The grace given unto me. I'm saying this through the grace, Paul said, that was given unto me. Go ahead. To every man uh -huh. that is among you, yeah. not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think. Come on. 
but to think soberly according as God has dealt to every man. As God has dealt to every man. What's the next word? The. In the King James Version, it says the measure of faith. There are some versions that say A that's written in man's perspective, basically. But there is not a measure because that wouldn't be just. You think it would be just, Miss Heron, for God to give me a measure more than he give you? That means I can believe on a higher level than you can, off, off gate. So, so the illustration Apostle Freeman gave, I forget the game. He said it wasn't spades. It was the next one up on another level. He said spades was for amateurs or huh? biz whiz. That's what he said. He said it wasn't no spades. We played biz whiz. Spades was for amateurs. He said, but like somebody dealing you a hand of cards, and he said, you pick up your cards after they finish dealing it, and you got, ooh, ooh. Mm, you got everything that's needed. Got everything that I need. Your goodness and your mercy. And you already looking at your partner. We're going to get 12 books. We're going to get it. And then somebody say, hold up. How many cars are we supposed to have? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you know it, you know it Blair. Oh, wait, don't, no, don't start no Miss Deal stuff. You got the best hand you ever had. Now you got to throw all this stuff back. You call it Miss Deal. That's what we could have called on God. Because the scriptures that he dealt unto every man. And if I looked at Pastor Rachel's life and saw she had three cups of faith, and I only had one and a half, Miss Deal. Oh no, God, throw this back in. Miss Deal. How you gonna give my wife three cups? So, so would it go by um, since we all have the same measure? The same measure. That do that also um, mean that some is actually working the measures? This is what I'm that's what I'm about to go the into. The measure, I'm sorry. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody is given the measure of faith. But just as we grow in grace, we have to grow in faith. And there are some people that take their measure to the gym. Wow. Okay. Okay. I get it now. And some people take their measure and sit on the couch. Bury it. Help us. And just like the illustration he gave, matter of fact, when me and you went to support him in, in, in Charlotte, he called a young man up. And he got a jacket, a, a, a sport coat from an a older gentleman. And he said, now, look at this jacket. This is the measure of faith. Mm -hmm. And he put it on that little guy. Mm -hmm. And that jacket almost looked like it swallowed the, the guy. Mm -hmm. He said, this guy has to grow mm -hmm. into this. Mm -hmm. Oh, Jesus. This faith thing, you got to grow in. But all of us got the same measure. But there are some of us that's stretching and working, growing in faith, where we can believe God for things that you probably can't. Even though you got the same measure, mine now is growing. I'm, I'm growing into mine. Does it make sense? More, does it make sense? Okay. So... This, how do you increase your spiritual sight? One word, faith. That's good. Jay, you got to see it without seeing it. That's what I've been talking about, this eye. Some people call it the third eye. You got to see it without seeing it. Okay, now, faith is, oh, we can go to it, or we can go at it so many different angles. Let's go at it by the scripture that says, okay, is that Hebrews 11 somewhere? Hebrews 11 is the faith chapter, right? Okay, is it verse 1 then by faith? I mean, faith is one of them. Where is it? Somebody find it. 11 and 1? 
Come on, come on now. Come on, Tamla. Boy, she get like Herbert Washington now. What Hebrews 11, 1 say? Now faith. Now, ooh, I like it. Now faith. Is the substance of things hoped for. Okay, watch this. Per Apostle Freeman's teaching, what God gave him, that faith is acting on what you believe. And then I came back and said, let's just say one word, faith is acting. You remember, that's why I start teaching, act, act like it. it. Right? But you can't act like what you don't see. Well, that's good. Yes, sir. Yeah. So, so, is it safe to say, as I said in a marriage retreat, that faith is not blind? Right? Faith is not blind. Therefore, it can see. So let's just, let's just play with the scripture. I'm just playing with the scripture a little bit. So we can say faith is seeing, right? Amen. Let's read it like that. Let, let, now seeing is the substance of things hoped for. Now when I say seeing, I'm talking spiritual. Yes, now seeing is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen naturally. You got it, don't you? Now seeing, mm -hmm. I Spiritual. see it. Oh, Jesus. Now seeing is the substance of things hoped for, the evidence of things not seen naturally. So we can go to say faith is seeing. Faith is not blind. Now we can go to where Blair was just saying, don't go there yet, but I'm going to say it, uh, 1127. By faith, Moses. Yes, sir. Okay, let's take out the word faith and put the new word in. By seeing Moses left Egypt. Where did he see it at? In his head, right? In his mind. He understood something that some other people didn't. By faith. By faith, by seeing Moses, watch this, left Egypt, watch this, not fearing mm, the king's wrath. What does it say? But for he endured, okay, as seeing, as seeing him, him who is Tamla hired, okay, <laughs> he endured as seeing him that's invisible. So faith is seeing. How do we increase our spiritual sight class? Faith. Just see it. That's a sure grace. Just see it. Well, sir, when you was when you were speaking on that, what the mm -hmm. Lord was giving me, that a lot of us don't like to act. Okay. <laughs> Because act is work. Yes, sir. And we would rather have something we can see. So we don't, we don't want to do the acting. We don't want to do the faith thing. Because I just want to wait till I get paid. And I know I'm going to be able to do this. Okay. I don't, I don't want to believe God. I don't so, want to act. Yeah. I'll just save up three years for this vacation or do whatever. Which means it keeps you in control okay. of the three dimension. Okay. You keep yourself in bondage. Because you don't want to act. But acting is what I do. So, because I see. So that's very logical, right? It's very logical. So and you logical have to check people, that. Uh -huh. A lot of logical people are like spiritually blind. Absolutely, absolutely. And if you bring faith to them, they think you're crazy because they're like, just pay for it. Just wait till you get paid. We don't got to believe God. That's what some people came against us. You don't remember some people came against us when all of us went to Arizona years ago with a one-way ticket. Yes, sir. We saw no, something. some people said some stuff. Oh, absolutely. But I already saw absolutely. myself back in North Carolina. Oh, absolutely. I knew it was coming back. I knew I'm coming back. Yes, sir. I mean, I'm, come on. One-way ticket. Get the ticket one way. How you getting back, the logical man say, faith. We trust God. We getting back to North Carolina. Don't worry about it. You did. You did. <laughs> but don't worry about it. We got back and brought two with us. Absolutely. But a lot of people, a lot of people, you have, to, you have to examine yourself. A lot of people don't like that part of God. They don't want to trust that part of God. They'll save instead of have faith. 
So you have to really be honest on that area. Would you have taken that trip with 13 of us on a one-way ticket? And guess what? We were broke. <laughs> I promise you. No, greater, I promise you. We were broke beyond measure. Everybody was broke because we scraped. We, I'm, this is real. We put gold. Everybody put their, I felt like we was in Jesus' day. We took off rings, yeah. old wedding rings. We put our gold together. We basically put it all on the table to pay all these tickets off. And the only thing it did is gave each of us a one-way ticket. We didn't even have a place to stay because we couldn't afford to stay. And I just want to know, be honest, would you have taken this trip? But the, the thing, I don't even want to hear the answer. But the thing is this. That's we already why I know. Cut in so fast. We already know. No, seriously, I don't want to hear the answer. But yeah. the thing is this, like Elisha's servant, mm -hmm. some of those people that went with us trusted my sight. Absolutely, absolutely. And I had to say, fear not, absolutely. just like Elisha did. Oh, absolutely. We getting back to Carolina. Yeah, absolutely. You really think Trust God. I'm finna get on a plane. <laughs> with our homes here, jobs here. My house still here, my car still here. Come on, man, what? And I'm talking about... On the, on the last night, maybe, of the revival, mm -hmm. one man, which was the chief of police, yes, sir. Yes, sir. gave us an envelope this thick. Yes, Lord. Because the first couple of nights during the offering, I say, well, Lord, I know you showed me, but you're going to have to touch these people hard because they're giving a nickel here, literally, yeah, and a dollar there, literally. And I, I'm going, who was keeping the count of the offering? Gerald or somebody? I say, what 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 the Lord blessed with tonight? We got fourteen dollars, sir. I say we're gonna trust God. Fourteen dollars can't do too much of nothing, right? It's thirteen of us got to get back home. Second night, what we got? We got about thirty dollars. That's thirty plus fourteen. What's that? Forty-four, forty-five dollars. I don't know if it was a tithe on a ticket. Okay, third night, about the same. Yes, sir. So the people with us can can I didn't even share what we had because I don't want to spread no panic through the camp. Because I see something. Oh, Jesus, about this last night. I understand. Faith trip. This last night, I literally thought I was going to heaven, one thing. Because uh, this man grabbed me. Did you see how he grabbed me and picked me up off the ground? That man picked me up off the ground. He was a tall chief police guy. And he was at the altar praying. I'm laying my hands on him. And I'm declaring some things in his life. And he stood up, man, and started shaking and picked me up, up off the ground, just hugging me. It was his expression of love to me, like, thank you, thank you, thank you. And this man gave us an envelope about this thick. I promise you. A manila envelope. And then something broke in the others as well. And then his when he gave, just flooding. everybody just started coming, laying stuff, jewelry at the altar and everything. And we paid for our so tickets much, and sir. brought two more with well, us. Well, sir, it was so much. We left that revival. Um, of course, again, supernatural there, supernatural back. We left that revival. We went and did another revival in Phoenix, Phoenix Arizona, Arizona. yeah. And we were able to pay for hotels. Remember, we didn't come on hotels. We had no hotel money, exactly bologna right. money, no dessert money. We have any kind of money. But God provided for us when we got there. We all had a place to stay. We ate good. Leah and her husband, Sean, met us, and this one loaded down the food, had fried chicken on the reservation, <laughs> loaded it down, had the, uh, what is it called, the, 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 the machine, y'all had to cut the lights Yeah, on. they were supposed to leave the generator. The gen they brought the, they generator. the generator. We didn't even have lights. We didn't, we didn't, we, now, we, now we didn't even bring God. that into the equation. I know, none of this, we didn't even think about, I mean, we just trusted we God. We set up the tent and say... What microphone are we going to use? Was like, where's the light? Where the light's at? Then Leah them came. We didn't really know. Y'all need a generator? I mean, yes. Yeah. <laughs> they brought the generator. This is all supernatural stuff happening. God provided so huge and so big that we left a revival into another revival, had hotels. And I re even remember at that time, even my sister, who's, you know, God bless her soul, Elizabeth came to that uh, yeah, revival she, yeah. and said, Pastor Ron, I want to pay for y'all hotel ticket. Absolutely. It's like blessings on blessings came. I'm like, my sister paying for our hotel? Yeah. And then we went into another revival in the city. Can you roll with people of faith? I just That's want to know, can you right roll? There. That's him. What? That's me praying for him right there. Oh my God. After I finished wow. praying for that man, he stood up. Where did you get that? That's Ooh, Minister Livingston. Thank you. Livingston, you brought that up good. 
That's him. Tell my daddy had hair. Yeah, that's uh, yeah, I had some good that's hair. That's my too. baby. That's my baby. <laughs> How what year was that? <laughs> huh? When, when 82. was that? <laughs> she said 82. That's your people. Uh, that's your people. 2007. 2007, you all. So that 24 was minus 7 is what? 21? Oof. No, 17. 17 so that's years 17 ago. 17 years ago? Man. Y'all don't understand. That's that same revival, this blind lady, eyes open. And she said after service one night, everybody was in the corner acting hysterical. They called me over and said, Pastor, Pastor, Pastor. I said, what's going on over here? She said, this lady can see. And I'm thinking to myself, I said, uh, well, she's supposed to be able to see. <laughs> and they said, no, 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 no. She was blind when she came here tonight. Faith trip. And from that time on in that revival, folk yeah. getting up out of wheelchairs. Spinal cords. Spinal cords. I think it was at least two. Straightening out. At least two or three spinal cords were healed. Lord Jesus. On that in the, during that revival. Okay. One was a young man, and then it was somebody else. It was two different ones that said they had a spinal cord, a curved spinal. But who who was the man? Oh, was it shy? Too? Who was the man that I was scared okay, to yes, pray sir. for every night? Cause every time we prayed for him, he fall like he broke his leg. <laughs> huh? No, that wasn't him. No, that was Ricardo. Oh. Ricardo. Yeah, Ricardo. Ricardo, Lord. Every time I pray for him, I was like. Is his legs broke? They just go some kind of way under him and twist. And I say, I ain't praying for him no more. <laughs> yeah, quick too. Okay, let's get to the end of this. That's good stuff though. Yeah. That brings back some memory. We got there totally, sir, by spiritual eyes. Yeah. If we were trying to uh, calculate numbers, we wouldn't have took that trip. Couple people told her not to take it. Yep. Okay. No, no, no um, round trip ticket. Okay. Last thing, and we're gonna have this meeting. As a matter of fact, I'm thinking. Okay. Oh Jesus. Okay. I, I I think I think that's a climax. So, faith. Faith. You've got to grow in it. Where are you in your faith? What I said Sunday, daughter, I said that by faith. When you text and say, sir, such and such and such, how do you want to proceed? I said, they'll be on shortly. And guess what? If they wouldn't have came on, that's what I believed. And she said, they said by 11.45, I said, they'll be on well before that. Let's, let's get dressed and go. And as soon as I say, Father. <laughs> as soon as the prayer started. You heard electricians say, yeah. Electricians say, these people crazy. Let me obey. Before I get fired. But, but the lights came on when she said, Father. She did. And she said, Father. And them lights came right on. But I'm saying that because of what you're teaching on about the eye. Okay, and yeah, the father about and the, the connection. Being, being in relationship. The lights came on when she said father. So a lot of your lights will come on when you connect with the father. Take that to the bank right there. She's I'm just you. trying to get another couple minutes out of this lesson. Is this helping anybody? Yes, No, where are you? Where are you? Do your do your measure still is. Okay, is your measure still a 32 in the waist? Mm. Or have it grown any? You know, there's some people from high school to now wore a 32 waist. Somebody probably said, hey, me, Pastor. <laughs> I, done grew in, I done grew in this grace here. <laughs> I bet it. I done grew in this grace. He's a... But what I'm saying to you is the measure, the measure that your father gave you. So good. Mm, have you grown in it? Or is it the same measure he gave you? You're still in that 32. Can't believe 
peanut butter for your jelly. Fear will stop your growth as well. So if you're afraid to believe I had God, a scripture about fear. I think Matter, Matt, no, fear. no, hold on. Hold on. I'm sorry, sweetie. That's okay. Um, God, ooh, ooh, is it Jude? Um, okay, building up yourselves in your most holy faith. Where is that? Finding somebody, Tamla Livingston. Jude, I think, it, no, it might not be Jude. Building up yourself in your most holy faith. Okay, somebody find it, somebody real quick. Building up yourself, that's what I'm hearing, in your most holy faith. It is Jude? Yes, sir. Well, praise the Lord. If you read that word, it'll come up in your spirit, boy. Jude what? 20. 20. So if somebody say Jude 20, you know it's only one chapter. <laughs> right? Yes, Jude 20. Yeah. Verse 20, right? Yes, sir. If, so say Jude verse 20. Jude verse 20. And they'll know it's only one chapter. They better know. Jude. Is it more than one chapter in Jude? Oh, okay. I'm just checking. I'm trying to check myself. But ye, <clears throat> beloved. Oh, beloved. However you want to say that, Pastor Rachel. <laughs> Building, watch this, up, watch this, your selves. Do you wait for Tuesdays and Sundays for us to build you up? How do we do this, Jude, on your most holy faith? How? Praying. How? In the Holy Ghost. Whenever me and you pray in the Holy Spirit, you building and growing in this faith. That's why the devil don't like for you to speak in tongues. Paul said, I pray in tongues more than all of you. <laughs> One of the last heathens that got saved, now I surpassed speaking in tongues more than all of you. Because he had tapped into this mystery. He sees something. He saw something. How is the devil going to fight what I'm saying in tongues. It's hidden, sir. It's hidden. It's hidden. So everything I'm asking God is a mystery. And he's building up my faith. Building me, building me, building me, growing me, growing me, growing me. Look at boss over there. Shata ba 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 shata. That's good, daughter. Growing in faith. One way you can grow in your faith is praying in the Holy Ghost. we can ask a question. How much do you pray in the Holy Ghost? Didn't you say... Uh, you got to be honest about it. And this wasn't... I don't know if it was this season. It was... Yes, sir. Still this said, season. Okay, you told Holy, me that the, the Holy Spirit... Personally was telling me like never your heart. before. Because like, I pray. You know, like never before, yeah. Pray more in tongues like you've never have. And I see why. I see why. Yeah, absolutely. Things that the enemy has been trying to throw out. But, yeah. Um, that's one of the things he told me. So he was, in another way, saying, build yourself up mm -hmm. in your most holy faith. Wow. So, you, so you have to take heed to that and understand. You don't know what tomorrow hold, but you want to be built for tomorrow. I may not know what tomorrow hold, but I'm built for tomorrow. Mm. You see what I'm trying to say? Mm, Jesus. I'm ahead of the current because of what I see, because God has already gone before me. He's already said, build yourself in, in prayer like never before. Pray in tongues like never before. He's telling you to get out, go, go work out. Build muscle like never before wow. in the spirit, because there are some things that's going to be coming that's going to try to hit, but you'll be able to have a defense mechanism. What's the defense mechanism? It's something you can't see. Amen. Wow, wow, wow. Yes, yes. Oh, you don't understand. Wow, wow, wow. So you okay, want to build so that side. Okay, so there's some faith yeah. that the, a measure, the measure has been given to all of us. All of us, yes, sir. How much have your faith expanded? Mm -hmm. There were some, like, 
cracks at the house that we trying to seal up. And Miss Livingston turned us on to some stuff called gaps and cracks, I think. Gaps and cracks. Boy, that don't sound good at all. <laughs> but oh, it's a true em. thing. We got them it's, in our it's life. The name of it is Great Stuff, Gaps and Cracks. Mm -hmm. And I went to buy a can, and I went to this crack that's in the house on the floor, and I started spraying it. And what was in the can, I'm visualizing I, 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 I know without a shadow of a doubt, it doesn't look like what came out the can. Uh -huh. mm. Ooh, because what came out that can starts swelling. Mm -hmm. yeah. What came out that can starts swelling, it looked like I put a biscuit in the crack. <laughs> <laughs> I told Pastor Rich, I say, do it both to swell like that? Look how that thing looks swole. I mean, it's really like a fat little biscuit. I, I said, maybe I should have just evened it out or something. Now I got to go do it all over. But what came out that can start swelling. Mm. The measure is in you. Yes, it is. But is it coming out swelling? It's up to us to make it swell. It's up to you. Spreading everywhere. Mm. It taught me how to spread it next time. <laughs> Please don't get none on your hand. God, so I washed my hand. I just got the last bit off of doing this Bible study. Y'all don't even know. It wouldn't come off. No, I told, I showed, I washed my hand three times and then took a shower. Still was on. That stuff was still saying, I ain't, I ain't coming out. I am not leaving here until you come out. But the measure has been given to you. Let's quit. And can I say this, sir? Go ahead, sweetie. Um, when you sit up under ministries of faith, what we try to do is get you uncomfortable to expand your measure. So we'll put you on expand faith runs, some of y'all. <laughs> and Amen. if you see spiritually, you know God is trying to build your faith. Amen. Because a mother of faith is going to try to push you, and what I mean by push you, to try to get you to work. That's a muscle that's not worked. And so you'll say, Mama, that's what, what Mama talking about. Oh, that's crazy. She's telling me to do what? No, Mama sees something. And I'm trying to now train my daughters. I'm trying to train your eye by what I see. But you can't go up against what I see because you don't see it. You got to submit up under what I see. Come on, somebody. Come up under my wings or come up under pastor wings if you're sons. And submit to what you don't have to see it. You don't know how easy this is for you. I got to go to sleep. You don't have to see it. You just have to believe it. Ruth did not see it. She just submitted to what Naomi saw. And she reaped the whole field. So wouldn't it be worth it if you reaped everything that God... You don't have this to is, see it. This is, this just is submit good. to this what the sight this that is. God has given someone else. And he made it easy for you daughters. He made it easy for your, you sons. But the total submission agreement is what's required for you to ride off of my we, faith. So wow. 13 of us with a one-way ticket rode off of the father and the mother's faith. We saw something. We was up all night. We didn't sleep. I trained the eyes of Michael Newkirk and Tahisha Newkirk all night. We couldn't even get 13 one-way tickets. And I said, I don't care what they say. Go to the next one. I said, I need you, Davion, and Michael getting up. All of us was an interceding We prayer. don't want to ride on separate planes. No, we want I the said, same plane. It's going to be the same place. She said, Mom, I did that. They said it, they can't help you. I said, go to ask them for their boss. Who is they supervisor? Who is they supervisor? Let's go up the chain. And I was like, get up. I, I, now, and she'll tell you this. She, they, had, they had me on a speaker. Am I right? They had a regular phone. They had me on a speaker. And I was administrating in faith, training their eye in faith. Tahisha didn't sleep the entire night. And I was still training her in faith because of what I saw. Yeah. And this really happened. This is how we end up getting 13 tickets. It was the last person at the point of exhaustion that said she was not even supposed to be. This is, by this time, it was like, what, 7 in the morning? No, it was like 2 p.m. Oh, 2, 2 p.m. We had done this all night and didn't get no breakthrough. I didn't know it was that late. About 2 p.m. that finally the lady said, um, hello, can I, could we? I just kept saying, tell them they boss and they boss. This 2 p.m. This how long, all night. We didn't sleep. On a speaker, administrating in faith, 
train, in a, intercede. Tell them that I need to hear them speaking in tongues. This happened all night. And then finally, the lady, they gave it to another boss. The lady said, hello, how you all doing? I just knew this was the right lady. She said, I'm not even supposed to be working, but I can help you all. The lady got right on, got 13 tickets for a one-way. All of us was on the same flight. And I don't know if you all remember this. Even at the last minute when we got these tickets, we had to be on the flight within an hour in Greensboro. Pastor was literally cutting somebody's head and had to leave from cutting. He was at work cutting someone's head. I had hair. three customers waiting on me. I say, I got to go. And they was like, Ron, what, what, what? I say, I see go. you when I get back. He did it. It was a sudden yeah. move through faith. Yeah. And we knew but God was going to do it. Good yes, stuff. Sir. Good stuff. Okay, so this is the closing. To a large degree, and we got to show you this video as well. Mm -hmm. uh, Dr. Miles Monroe said, yeah. to a large degree, your husband is your father as well. And you've heard me say that before, yes, sir. but sometimes we hear other people say they hit home. Um, that's why he never told the woman she had to to do what L leave or huh? Yeah, did she said did, did God tell the man or the woman that? What the scripture say? Therefore, if a do it say man? Okay, go to what it say. Therefore. Where is it at? Genesis. Where is it? Huh? It's a, it's a couple scriptures throughout the Bible. Talks about that. Uh, da, da, da. Somebody. Okay, media not back there. They sleep, I think. Shy got it? What does it say? Oh, you don't. Just Google it. Let me Google it. Yeah. <laughs> That's a good thing, actually. What did it say? Mark 10 and... Mark 10 and 13. Yeah, yeah. Read that one. Let me see. For this call shall a man leave his father, leave his father and, mother and mother and cleave to his, own, to his wife. Now, that man is not mankind mm -hmm. because it specifically say and cleave to his wife. That's, that's a natural man. Therefore, should, he never told the woman to leave her father, did he? Or did he? Because at a wedding, most, in most cases, a father walks her down the aisle, right? But he gives her to her father, the husband. She's never left. But this is, this is why I'm ending this like this. If you are married and you are not as a husband in line with your heavenly father, that part, that part. Come on. how could you be a true father to your wife? Okay, you got to birth this lady, shape her. You, you see what I'm saying? Okay, this is a married class, ain't it? But let's stop. It's for everybody. See, he never told he never told her to leave her father because she will always be with him. He told me and you as men to leave. And that leave is not the leave you're probably thinking. But the father naturally walks her down the aisle. That's how the plan was supposed to be. But there are some brothers or uncles that have walked, or friends that have walked, but it's never supposed to have been that way. A father brings his daughter down the aisle and gives her to her father. Wow. wow. That's deep. That's pretty deep. And she is where, where God wants her to be from the beginning. Watch this here. From Father God to Father naturally to now father husband so powerful never left so powerful and you ask yourself in your marriage here or e campus if you're a wife are you fatherless hmm. maybe after this i'm gonna, I'm gonna let it's like a Maybe a two-minute, if that, two-minute video 
what Dr. Miles Monroe explained, and you can probably get it. Sometimes I can become familiar, a familiar voice, and you might can understand it. So last, last thought, we're going to send it over to them because they're telling me to be quiet. I'm good. They're giving me signs. I'm good. Huh? I'm good, yeah. I'm like Apostle Freeman. Apostle Freeman be looking like, why y'all got that sign up? <laughs> Put it down. I'm not fin Okay, okay. <laughs> All right, I'm going to open. Yeah, okay, Pastor Rachel. <laughs> let's, let's send it to...